Crowdsourcing Essentials for Success-Driven Women Business Owners Over the last few years, the number of companies turning to the crowd for content and ideas has increased tenfold. These aren't just shoestring budget tiny businesses or tech companies. Huge names like Apple, Amazon, and Netflix have all used the power of the crowd to generate ideas. Before we begin, take a moment to check in with yourself. If you suffer from imposter syndrome, chronic self-doubt, not enough ness, or any other self-limiting belief, you may think crowdsourcing, including crowdfunding, which we'll discuss later, isn't for you because you will be found out, you may feel as though you are asking for a handout, or you may think you cannot possibly do something that big companies do. I assure you, this isn't the case, so don't let that stop you from considering this method. The term crowdsourcing was first coined by Jeff Howe in Wired magazine in 2006. By June 2013, it had been added to the Oxford Dictionary. Put simply, Crowdsourcing is a method of getting ideas, content, solutions, or support from a group of people or community rather than from employees or suppliers in-house. It isn't reserved for big companies alone. Believe it or not, people have been doing it for centuries. One of the first examples of crowdsourcing happened in 1714 when the British government called the public to help solve the longitude problem that killed hundreds of sailors each year. The problem was solved by the invention of the chronometer, a kind of clock in a sealed box that helped ships determine longitude accurately no matter what weather conditions existed. Other examples of early crowdsourcing include the creation of the first Oxford Dictionary by hundreds of volunteers, the design competition that created the Sydney Opera House, the content on Wikipedia, reality TV shows like American Idol and Meridian, a British progressive rock band in the 90s asked its fans to finance its tour. In fact, there have been countless instances of crowdsourcing throughout history. It's not just a buzzword, but a simple truth that creativity and innovation can come from anywhere. The great idea you're looking for could very well come from some random stranger with a new way of seeing the problem, and not from the company meeting room. How crowdsourcing benefits your business Crowdsourcing has recently become a buzzword in marketing circles because it offers benefits to businesses now more than ever. In the internet age, where there is daily contact between people and the brands they like, the power of the crowd is incredibly potent. The greatest advantage of crowdsourcing is that, as mentioned, the great idea you're looking for may be in the brain of one of your customers, not in your company. Someone from outside your organization or industry may have a fresh take on the problem at hand. Crowdsourcing is also useful because it leverages the wisdom of the crowd. We all want to create products, content, and brands that people love. So, we try to glean as much information from our target market as possible. But when you leave it up to the crowd itself, you harness their ideas directly. Your market will create the products and ideas it wants to see. It's a very personalized form of marketing. Another advantage, and a significant reason that crowdsourcing is all the rage right now, is that it's a powerful form of customer engagement. Customer engagement creates a close relationship between customers and the brands they love. People love a chance to get involved with their favorite brands. With crowdsourcing, your customers have a hand in shaping some aspects of your business directly. Finally, one indirect benefit of crowdsourcing is that your customers do some of your work for you. This shouldn't be a primary reason for crowdsourcing, but in some cases, especially in crowdfunding, it can be a bonus. Chapters in this series. Introduction, Chapter 1, How Crowdsourcing Works. Chapter 2, Crowdsourcing Tips and Best Practices. Chapter 3, Crowdsourcing Mistakes to Avoid. Chapter 4, Crowdsourcing Content Creation. Chapter 5, Crowdsourcing for Marketing.
Chapter 6. Crowdsourcing Design. Chapter 7. Crowdsourcing Microtasks. Chapter 8. Crowdfunding. Conclusion. Getting Started. What you will learn from this series. In this blog series, you'll learn several ways to use crowdsourcing to benefit your business. For each method, you'll learn tips to help crowdsource more effectively. We'll cover how crowdsourcing works step-by-step -step for most types of crowdsourcing projects, general tips and best practices that apply to all forms of crowdsourcing. The most common mistakes businesses make when they first start crowdsourcing and how you can avoid them. How you can use crowdsourcing to create unique content that engages your audience directly with specific ideas you can implement today. Marketing tasks and techniques that can be left to the crowd, such as market research and product ideas. The types of design tasks that can be crowdsourced and how this can be accomplished for best results, along the list of resources. Which microtasks can be crowdsourced both inside and outside your company, and best practices for doing so. The basics of crowdfunding and the different types you can use to raise funds for your business or creative project. The next steps you need to take to get your first crowdsourcing campaign off the ground. Now for your action step. Consider what areas of your business could be helped by crowdsourcing. Answer the following questions. In which areas do you need help? What are some ways your business could benefit from crowdsourcing? 